section E, CMA part 2, and this is your essay 2. Right. Let's read this information first, and then we will proceed with the questions. Ultracomp is a large information technology firm with several facilities. The firm's audit committee has determined that the management must implement more effective security measures at its facility. Security measures related to what? A security environment uh, improvement team has been formed to formulate a solution. Janet Lynch is the financial analyst assigned to the team. She has determined that the six-year time horizon is appropriate for the analysis and that a 14% cost of capital is, is applicable. 14% cost of capital. We would use this rate as our discount rate. The team is in investigating the following three vendors, vendor A, B, and C. Let us analyze these vendors and then do the computation. Vendor A is a new entrant in the security industry. Now, this is a risk, gentlemen. A new entrant doesn't know the tricks of the trade. So, this I find this to be a little risky thing. Vendor A is a new entrant to the security industry and uh, is in the process of introducing its security system which utilizes new technology, untested, unproven technology that can put your business in danger. So I find this little concerning. The system would require an initial investment of $4 million and have a life of six years, uh, a net cash flow of $500,000 per year for salaries, operations, maintenance, and all costs related to the system would also be required. So this is your initial investment and this is your annual cash flows. Do we have depreciation tax shield? If you find the tax rate, thanks, uh, then I think it would be a little messy. If no tax rate, things will be easier. So I, I don't think so. There's a tax rate given. So just it's the initial investment. And these are the cash flows. Things are then much easier. See, Shahrukh, that looks difficult, but without tax, things are much more easier now. Vendor B is an established firm in the security industry and has security system that has been on the market for several years. That's a good point. The system requires an initial investment of 1 million and will have a useful life of 3 years. At the end of the 3 year period, Ultra Company would have to replace the hardware at an estimated cost of 1.25 million based on the current technology, a net cash outflow of 750,000 per year for salaries, operations, maintenance and a related cost would be required. That's the second option. A wonderful question, I must say. Third vendor C is a nationally recognized firm in the security industry, well known. And it has proposed to Ultra that it provide it that it provide a total security solution, everything. Vendor C would provide all the hardware and personnel to operate and maintain the security system as called for the specification of Ultracom for all its locations. It's a one-stop solution. Everything will be done by vendor C. But this would cost quite a lot. Ultracom would be required to sign a six-year contract at a cost of 1.4 million per year. So, gentlemen, there is no NPV as such. All these are cash outflows. Only cash is leaving your hand in all these three options. Mafi cash coming in, only outflow and outflow. So we have to analyze which of these is better. If we go for pure financial aspect, so I would select the one that results in the lowest present value of outflows. The one that results in the lowest total present value of the payments. That's from the financial side. But that's not the only concern. That's why it's a very good question because it's not always the money that matters. You have to see the reliability of the vendor right it's market standing how many years have you been have it been in service right so it's a good question from that aspect as well so question number one says ultra company utilizes net present value method to con to quantify the financial aspect of corporate decisions calculate the npv of each of the three alternatives let's do them right here going for vendor a don't forget our discount rate is 14 percent npv for vendor a do not go for columnar form as long as you can give clear computations in in paragraphic form perfectly fine no issue at all 
So let us find out the present value of outflows for vendor A. Vendor A requires $4 million right now. So put this $4 million as it is Murphy discounted needed because this is what you have to pay right now. Then we have to make $500 payment. I would write it as 0.5 million and it must be added. All these are negative numbers so I'm writing them in red. Plus $500,000 means 0.5 million. And how many such payments would be made? The duration of this project is six years, 0.5 million year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. So instead of discounting 500,000 every year, I can simply multiply this with an annuity factor of 14% for six years. And if I calculate it straight away using my calculator, it's 4 million plus 0.5 times the annuity factor of 0.3889, it gives me a total value of 5944500. Done. Let's go for vendor B. That was vendor A. Let's do it with blue color. Present value of the payments to be made to vendor B. This is little twisted. Because this vendor says give me 1 million right now. So this 1 million would be shown right now. Then it says you have to pay 1.25 million at the end of the third year. 1.25 million to be paid at the end of third year. I need its present value, so it will be must, must be multiplied with the discount factor of 14% for the third year. Plus, you have to pay this much amount of money, 750,000, for all the six years. First three years and remaining three years. So basically it's an annuity factor. 750,000 to be paid in year one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you will use the same annuity factor for 14% at six. So it's going to be 1 million plus 1.25 million multiplied by the discount factor for the third year at 14% plus 750 multiplied by annuity factor, same 3.889. And when you calculate this all, it will give you a total of 476. 0500. Okay, let's do the last one now. Last one is a straightforward one. Present value of the payments made to the vendor C is just a single payment to be made to the in the next six years. So you'll just multiply this 1.4 million with annuity factor of 14% for six years. That is 3.899. So 1.4 million multiplied by 3.899. That is 544600. See, so nicely done, so little space, and no need of tabulation. You got the results right in front of you. So, as you can see, that the lowest amount in all the vendors is the vendor B, just 4.7 million. So, just look at this what he has done. Can you draw this table in the exam condition? course not. All you need is just lay down your computation horizontally this way, this way, this way. Result 1, result 2, result 3 and we ended up at the same conclusion. NPV of the payment or the present value of outflows is the lowest for vendor B, 4765 only and that's your conclusion. So calculate NPV of each of the following three alternatives. That was question number one. Question two says, Based on the financial consideration, which of the three alternatives should the team recommend? Explain why. Of course, we will select vendor B, reason, lowest cost, and uh, what else? Not just the numbers, we also need to see some other soft information given the scenario. Vendor B is an established firm in the security industry and has security system that has been on the market for several years. So, not as risky as A, but still it has the lowest cost, so B is being recommended for the same reasons. System that meets the requirement at the lowest cost. And this is how you can develop your answer. These are the points to be included and this is how you will give a developed answer. That covers the selection of vendor B, why do you select and further justification of your answer. And there you go.
Right, that was question number two for you. Question three. Define sensitivity analysis and discuss how Ultra could use this technique in analyzing the three vendors' alternatives. Sensitivity analysis basically is a tool that is based upon what-if analysis. Like, present value of outflows depend upon many factors. Your annual recurring amount you pay, your initial investment, other costs, etc. So how do these variables affect the present value of outflow? And which of these factors is the one that can cause the greatest swing in the present value? For example, your annual recurring payment, just 10% increase in the annual recurring payment would result in 25% increase in the present value of outflows. It means your project, the present value of outflows, is highly sensitive to your annual recurring payment. It could be initial payment also. So we just want to know which of these factors can cause the greatest swing in the present value of outflows. This is what you call the sensitivity analysis. We test the impact of changing investments assumptions. Sometimes we change the initial investments, annual recurring costs, etc, etc. Sensitivity of the outcomes to change in parameters, the guide. So sensitivity analysis is a tool to test the impact of changing investments on resulting net present values. We would like to determine which of these factors NPV is most sensitive to. So we have to be careful about that particular factor accordingly. Right, so that's how we use sensitivity. That's what sensitivity analysis is all about and how we can use it. The next question says, identify and briefly discuss three non-financial considerations that Ultra team should consider prior to making recommendation to senior management. If you remember the case study, had information available for all vendors. Vendor A was new. Risk is involved because the technology is untested. Vendor B has been in business for some years and are, uh, uh, it, it is expected to be effective, but since it is not as settled as C, so there is still some uncertainty in the long run. Out of the, all these, the C is the most well-known vendor, nationally recognized. Lower risk, but this is the most expensive one. So you can you just saw a little while earlier, B is the least expensive, but it might be uncertain in the long run. A is new and even still it's expensive. You can reject A that or straight away. C is the market leader, recognized in the market, well known, but it is the most expensive. So after discussing these three points, then you can go for a conclusion. So Ultracom should review the management capabilities and financial stability of each of the vendors. Then Ultra should contact previous clients of A, previous clients of B and C. The previous clients can give you very good feedback and based upon this feedback, then you can make a final assessment, a final decision, which vendor to go for, right? So on these lines, you can just give a bigger paragraph like this. This is too big, but just need to cover these points to answer this asset type completely.